Next up, Finn Rittrock. That's his name, Finn Rittrock? Yeah. Uh, uh, joins the Green Lantern series. He's going to be playing Guy Gardner. Uh, it, do you know when is this supposed to be released? Not sure. Um, this is really the first bit of casting news we've had, so that's why I think it was on our radar. But it, it also included some disclosure, kind of reminder of the, you know, it's, it's not a one Green Lantern series. It is a Green Lantern core series, so this is like multiple lanterns and all sorts of retconning of the, the characters from the comics a bit to fit them all into one series. So it feels pretty big to me. It doesn't feel like a 2022 event, to be quite honest. Seems like they yeah. have a lot to do. Yeah. But first bit of Captain News shows forward progress, I guess. What expectations do you have of this series? I mean... So this will be like a J.J. Abrams. Actually, no, sorry. This is a Greg Berlanti series. I think we have a feel for what we're going to get because mm -hmm. he's basically been the mastermind behind the Arrowverse. So I kind of feel like you're going to get big budget, like kind of a bigger budget, more adult version of kind of the Arrow Flash Legends of the Tomorrow type style. I think that's probably the best guy, which is like probably not that bad because quite honestly, like early Arrow and early Flash are quite good. But they're quite good for a CW series. I don't know that we would consider them epic in the context mm. of, you know, a, a cinematic universe. So, you know, I'd probably say, like, without seeing it, I would guess it's going to be like a BB plus type of effort at best. But that's my only concern of this show looking like a CW show. Right? I, I, I mean, Titans is dope. I like Titans. Um, yeah, I had my issues with it. But it looks good. I think Titans looks more expensive. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, granted, it's going to be an outer space, so it certainly is going to look different. How different from that 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 look and feel of the CW? I don't want it to feel like a CW show. That's my only concern. I think the challenge too is, as we saw in the Ryan, the Martin Campbell, Ryan Reynolds version of Green Lantern. This is one where you have to get the effects right. Because if you don't, it really looks cartoony in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. So that's going to be, I think, we'll know, I feel like, by the first trailer, if they've got the visuals in hand. And that probably will go a long way to feeling like, uh, is this, does this feel like CW? Does this feel like a, a real yeah, so um, let us know what you think uh, of this cast for Guy Gardner. I mean, they're going back. They're going back. I wonder if we're going to see... Are they going to have Jon Stewart as well? Yes. Reportedly, that's why That's why they wouldn't let Zach use him in the movie, that he's in this. Because they have... Um, oh, I'm going to get them all wrong. So Hal, Hal is in this. Hal Jordan's in this. Alan, is it Alan Taylor? Or I'm going to screw that up. What's what's it? Mentioned Alan, what's his last name? He's in this too. Mm -hmm. um, so they're kind of all got it. Yours. Yeah. Wow. I wonder how the, how people will react to it, not seeing their origin and how they become John Stewart. Probably they put that in the in the series, maybe last yeah, flashbacks. Uh, <laughs> the thing that one of the things that upsets me is Zack Snyder tweeting what Green Lantern would have looked like and, and it's like yeah you can do whatever you want but Zack Snyder know what he's doing man it's like what I mean it's again creating that 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 that, that device is is the I don't I don't want to I don't want to cause no really see what the lantern looked like we just saw the green screen with the mocap but there was a a, a, a we just saw that, but there was a drawing that was out, and this oh, that, art. yeah, okay. yeah, there was some some concept art of what he was supposed to look like as well, and then you get the mocap, and it's like, what do you what do you want people to say? Like, what do you want the fans to say? Doesn't it create that release the Snyder verse type agenda again? He's, I mean, he's leaving he's leaving the doors open, but. I think as we discussed last week with the numbers being what they are, I think he's going to have to wait until the print 
iteration of management is probably gone. Yeah. Yeah, so let us know what you think about uh, the Green Lantern Corps series uh, coming to you. Are you excited about it? In the context of everything we have going on, where does Green Lantern series rank for you? You know, listen, I have a t- I have a tough time being excited for anything WB uh, unless I see something. I haven't seen anything with Shazam, so I'm not excited. The only I haven't seen anything with the Green Lantern. I'm not excited. The only thing that I've seen that I'm excited for is the Batman. I know we got casting uh, for Shazam. I'm not excited. I, w- I, didn- I wasn't too fond of the first one. The first one for me was like an ant It was okay, but it wasn't like, oh my God, I can't wait. It was nothing like that. So the only thing that I'm looking forward to seeing, anything with Batman, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. So yeah, that's, that's, that's as far as my excitement goes to whatever WB is going to put out on either TV or movie. Next up, this is why I like Kevin Feige, man. You know, just quick on this, yeah. Kevin Feige shoots down the, a Spider-Man cameo. The writer for Phantom and the Winter Soldier had written in Spider-Man. And Kevin Feige said, no, stop it. Just because these characters are available to you, doesn't necessarily mean that they belong in the story. Kevin knows that if you put, AKA Doctor Strange, you put Spider-Man in anyone else's series, that's gonna be a high point of that series or that episode. You can only go down from there pretty much, unless you do something fantastic, which is really hard to pull off after putting those cameos in there. Do they belong? in those story. Kevin Feige said, no, stop it. Do they belong in this story? And that's why, man, Kevin Feige is the man. He doesn't, he, and I think, um, what's the name of the writer of, of Falcon and the Winter Soldier? He said, um, again, just because you have all this, these characters available to you doesn't mean the, that um, you take the reins and geek out and just put everybody in, in, in the joint. Yeah, you would like to see these characters. You would like to see these characters. But how how much will the story suffer because of it? Well, Brian, what do you think? Yeah, you saw it. So the Spider-Man one was, uh, was in the script and then forced to be removed. The Doctor Strange one got a lot farther. Kevin yeah. Feige confirmed they actually had Benedict Cumberbatch signed. They had a contract for him to make an appearance in the finale. He was in the like the shooting script and he was rewritten. Wow. Which shows you how much they value kind of the, the franchise, the story arc they're trying to tell over to your point, getting that cheap pop, getting getting the big name in there. Because, I mean, that's, you know, and that's, I think also a lot of faith in the professional relationship to say like, hey, we, we set this up for you and then have to make that call and be like, you didn't make the cut. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We yeah. don't like you, but like, you didn't make the cut because it doesn't fit. Yeah. But now we're trying to connect to your movie for next year. That is showing a lot of restraint because this was their first series. They would have been very easily forgiven for putting a couple of more Avengers in the series just to make sure everyone tuned in. Yeah. He, 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 he's getting fight. We don't need it. That doesn't make sense. Doesn't yeah. make sense. We're not going to do it. Yeah. But would it have would it have made sense to put him in a, a end credit scene? Well, I think yes. I think to your point about high point, the only place he could fit is the very last scene. Exactly. Exactly. Put him in at the very end to get you there and looking forward to the next movie. And as you said before, and as we said, that you know, the endings of these shows haven't been amazing. They've been good, but it, it, it wasn't the previous episodes are usually the best episodes for these shows. And they haven't really ended it well. Had they ended it 
with the last cutscene of Doctor Strange saying whatever it whatever, right? I think it would have been a good decision to do so. But they chose to write him out. And and again, yeah, like you said, they show a lot of restraint, man. And and it's funny how the commercials was him trying to communicate with him. That that would have been dope. That would have been dope to show at that at the very end that he was the one creating these. I agree with you, but I think the way Kevin Feige described it would tell you that he was not written in as a end credit character. He was in the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that tells me is that he was actually going to be one A billing with one in the finale, and they decided it was going to upstage her. Oh yeah, definitely would have. Yeah, definitely would have because it's like if Doctor Strange is at the is at the end of it. How does Doctor Strange not solve everything and and not and not become unbeatable, right? So, but again, using him at the very end and in, in the end credit scene would have been, I think, a better send off for that show. Let us know in the comment section below what you think about Kevin Feige shooting down all your dreams and hopes of having all these characters in one show or in one movie. The man is a genius. Let us know in the comment section below. Shang-Chi, negative reaction, is getting a, ne a negative reaction in China. Why do you think that is, Brian? I like the show, but as we said before, it was a little bit underwhelming. Could that underwhelmingness that we felt be stronger in China? Well, sadly, that's, at least based on what I've read, that's not why the reaction is negative. So read carefully here but again this is me relaying what i've read but it seems so if you guys totally different genre but if you go back to crazy rich asians huge box office success in the u.s complete box office failure in china and one of the main criticisms of the movie in asia was that because this was based on a book that the nationalities of the actors did not match the nationalities of the characters. And that meant a lot more. So whereas in the US, it was celebrated with sort of this broad strokes of this is an Asian cast. Yeah. But in Asia, there's a lot of different places when in Asia, so that's not necessarily the same thing. So yeah, yeah. You know, East Asia versus South Asia, like there's some real distinctions there. And I think that was part of why the movie was treated as sort of with derision over there. Okay, you, you changed, you took too many liberties with what the book was. Mm -hmm. you know well, it seems like there's a little bit of that here. So what I read was basically, it has a lot to do with Simu Liu and how he appears. And that being what the audience there feels is appropriate for the character. Now, I would counter anyone on that front, and I'm coming from a Western perspective of the comic itself has some pretty unfortunate stereotypes, which by the way, is why they changed the origins of Shang-Chi because yeah. the origins of the comic, mm, probably not. <laughs> yeah. So my counter to that is, why are we hung up on that? when we're already trying to modernize the story and, and, and sort of um, change it for the better, but this is a big deal. So as I kind of told you, you know, the, you guys, like Tony Leung, who plays the, the Mandarin, the response to him has been unilaterally positive. Mm -hmm, he looks mm -hmm. amazing. Everyone's excited about him because he is their guy. He yeah, is yeah, yeah, like, yeah. take every top actor here, put it into one. That is the guy. Yeah. It has definitely been about how does Shang-Chi look? Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. unfortunate, but it does seem like it is driving some of the reaction. And interestingly, in Black Widow, where that's not even a consideration, obviously, the response to Black Widow has actually been tracking much higher mm -hmm. than Shang-Chi. And that's been, at least what I've read, that's been attributable to the role. So it has nothing to do with the footage. It has nothing to do with the style or the, the content. And it unfortunately has a lot to do with something that has some undertones that we wish wasn't the case. But yeah, yeah. That seems to be where we're at. So we'll see how that changes as we get more 
and the press tour starts and all that sort of thing. But that is the hope, and and I'm hoping that the quality of the film and the representation is going to shine through with the martial arts and and, and the, the actors in this film. Uh, I I I still am holding on to. Uh, my prediction that is going to make over a billion dollars and it's going to do well across the globe. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you think about Shang-Chi uh, and the reaction that China has given it and what you think Shang-Chi will overcome that reaction and, and, and be a, a huge success at the box office over there in China. Kevin Feige describes Loki as a crime thriller now they always do this to us man <laughs> listen i know you're like sort of like had enough with loki and his story and all that um but i, I was reading uh, an article that you sent me regarding this and it's, it's something like sort of it looks like sort of spark just um, clicked in my head. And it was, uh, I think the phrase was where the time various authority are in charge for uh, uh, making sure things are in their right place and, and, and organized or whatever. And Loki is an agent of chaos and there is the drama right there. Um, that piqued my interest. And Kevin Feige describing this as a crime thriller. I'm, I'm not sure how. Um, obviously, he's going to be set in motion to correct certain things. What things? I don't know. Uh, but certainly in the trailers that we've seen, there have been places that he goes to where they're opposite of what turned out in the movies and stuff like New York and the Avengers Tower all that was destruction something happened he has to fix it so let's see what this is going to turn out I'm still looking forward to seeing this I don't know how I gotta look at my list again but I think I didn't have it as low as you did probably yeah I have it pretty low I mean I think I'm trying to make the crime thriller thing work in my head I guess what I kind of came up with was, in theory, each place in time or each piece of the multiverse he goes to, effectively it's a puzzle, right? Yeah. So I would think there's almost this law and order type of detective work to be done to kind of, if, even if you know what the outcome ought to have been, it's kind of re-engineering those pieces over mm -hmm. the course of these episodes. I. I guess I could see that being a little bit of sort of, you know, your, your part detective part, as you said, sort of chaotic adventurer. And maybe that's, that's what he's going with there. The thriller part actually had me a little more thrown for a loop because this has been presented tonally. as still pretty light. I mean, you've got Owen Wilson, you've got Tom Hiddleston kind of hamming it up. Like a thriller says dark to me, you know? And so, yeah. 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 This hasn't felt dark no. in its construction, so I'm a little more confused on that. But you know, Kevin knows how to tease, so he throws that out there. And it's a genre we haven't talked about, but we have talked about these shows as being, you know, true to classic genres. And I think that description would at least lead you to believe that this show is also along those lines. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten sort of the, the sitcom homage kind of gotten the, the buddy cop homage and now we get maybe something in the crime yeah it's csi i don't know the world yeah i mean they're talking about loki well not even loki but tom hiddleston really having a, a sort of range of performances that's going to impress everyone watching this so they're really high on this hence they green lit a second season of this well, we haven't talked about these shows from an award standpoint, but one of these is going to win something, whether it's being nominated for best drama series, whether it's one of the cast members being nominated as, you know, a, a best actor, best actress, best support, like 
they're going to go up for Emmys. I don't know which show it's going to be, but one of them's going to pull it off. We got to, we got, we got to do a show. We got to do a show on the best. We got to beat the Emmys to it and do our own Disney Plus uh, Emmys award show. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, uh, Kevin Feige describing this as a crime today. Do you actually see it that way? Um, let us know your thoughts um, in the comment section below. There was something I wanted to add before we get to our final topic, which is the first look that we got of Eternals and that trailer that they released today with Stanley talking. And it's like... How can you not love this, man? How can you not love it? Huh? You yeah. want to go to the movies like right What? Now. They set it up beautifully. See you at the movies. They getting ready. They getting ready. That's what that was. Uh, but there was something else I wanted to discuss that, um, ah, and you and I are always like, why did he say this? Because now you're putting yourself in a position where if you don't, oh, I don't talk about that. If, if you don't, if, if this is not the best thing you've ever seen in your life, then you failed this. Taiki Watiti is talking about Thor, Love and Thunder being, let me see, I got to get the quote. Best Marvel film ever. The best Marvel film ever. Family is inner Tom Holland. <laughs> you and I, Brian, can agree that the best Marvel film ever is The Winter Soldier. A close second is Infinity War. Huh? I'll buy that. Okay. Then, then, I mean, I don't know if we want to do a ranking one day about this because a lot of you guys already did it I yeah know. yeah on the show um winter soldier is a clear one i think like then it's a step down i think there's like a tier mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. I, would mm -hmm. I would say in that tier infinity war i would have end game just because of the sheer difficulty of it i think it still makes it um just to get through the whole catalog i would probably have civil war in that here i have i probably have iron man after that i was gonna say original iron man the original iron man is just a great it's a great movie yeah. it's so a that's great probably movie. the tier that's yeah probably, to me that's probably the, the, the next as your five there's a so like a one and then it's like two through five you can throw them in yeah so taiki what is saying that this is going to be the best marvel film ever and it's like all I have to say is that it better be, Taika. It better be. Or else I'm going to go in. That's, that's all we have to say about that. Now, I'm sure all of you have seen the trailer for uh, Marvel's next phase. We saw new shots of Black Widow. Which look really good, by the way. Telling you, Black Widow is going to be up the there. More footage they show you, it look it looks better. And if it is tracking that well in China, maybe they have a shot. Maybe they have a shot. I, I kind of had eight hundred million out there. Maybe they got a shot at a billion. Dollars. At a billion, the international market is there for it. Yeah. Um. So we saw new shots of of uh, Black Widow, Eternals. What else did we see new shots of? Well, we, so I'm going to link in the set photos here because we got the titles. So we've had some set photos of um, this Marvel in costume. So yeah. we'll link that to when we talk about the titles. I think and, classic uh, costume. So I was just about to say, even though, you know, not the series you're most excited about, I even thought the Purple Hawkeye costume looked really good. We thought that they, I was like, where's that been? Why wasn't he in that? during the actual Avengers movies. It looks mm -hmm, really true mm -hmm. the comics. But yeah, so the Miss Marvel costume looks great. It looks like, even without effects, it looks like it should be. But, uh, but I mean, this is, yeah, this is about it. Since, since we're talking about, if we're going to hype a movie as the best Marvel film ever, maybe. I don't know, man. The first couple shots. Let's talk about it. You can sell me on it. 
the first shots of Eternals look beautiful. Look different than anything that we've seen. It looks, when that speedster shows, I mean, that was, that was, that was dope. That was, oh man. The realism in it, in it all, the the look of it, this is going to be. Well, like, like sunset, it looked awesome. The lighting on the characters was great. When this dude takes off his glasses or put him on, I forget what his name. Neil Johnny. Yeah. Yes, that looked like a that was a great shot, you know. And I'm telling you, this movie is going to be amazing, amazing. Yeah. Given that we know that there are action set pieces that are at that time of day, now that you've seen that shot, you're like, give, give me, give me this. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I, so to your point about that little last shot where the where the speedster comes in and you see just from a distance, yeah. I was like, every video game that's tried to become a movie, like all those people are like, because <laughs> that looked perfect. That. I gotta ask you this. After seeing that, is Shang Chi still your number one movie that you're most excited about? Well, I mean, this looks more interesting. This, this did a better job of getting you excited for what's under the hood than Shang Chi did. And I will say, like I told you, they've been so coy with Angelina's part, and they gave me that one shot of the yeah. sword, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Listen, if there's any, if there's an award winning performance in this film or visual performance, anything award winning, Eternus is going to get some of that. Do you buy Kevin saying that Cersei's the lead? That was the other deke we kind of got this week, was they promoted that as Richard Madden being at the center, but he said Gemma Chan is actually the, the lead if there is a lead in this movie. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I've heard um, Richard Madden is spectacular in this. Um, we haven't seen much of Cersei in, in, in this. Um, we saw her speaking and all that, but we haven't seen her in action. So it's, it's, this movie is still up in the air in terms of what this is going, who the characters are that are gonna, that are gonna stand out, right? Um, and who's gonna be the lead. Um, you would expect that Richard Madden would be the one because he's Icarus, he's the guy, right? Um, and they still show like the shot where they show the lineup in, I guess it's like a forest or something moving. He's still front and center. You see yeah, him, he's yeah. still in the prime position. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, we called it though. We said when you saw the visuals of this, if it was going to be as different as she hyped it up to be, you would know. Didn't do it justice. Listen. What we saw is nothing. We saw 5% of what this movie is going to look like. Because all you saw was just shot people. That, that, you didn't see any people showing their powers. You didn't see, except for that, 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 that the speedster. That's it. And that was subliminal. You want to see something quick? <laughs> that's it. That that's like it. A, that was like a that was like a little bit of a little bit of like a wink at the Flash movie. Like, oh yeah, why watch this? Yeah, you want to see a Flash? That that was that was just so beautifully done, man. And that Take, backdrop, crazy backdrop. They were. I was like, what an idea to shoot it at that distance. And like I said, it really looked like an RPG. It looked like you were playing like a video game with like your parties like moving around. I was like, this looks. Good. Yeah, yeah. This movie. I, I have to say that I've been excited for Eternals for a while. I didn't know what to where we're gonna get from it. And as time has gone by and more information has gotten out, and then you see what the director's been doing and you see her talk about the film and you see other people being in love with what they've seen so far of this film. That excitement is just building more and more and more. And again, and if you haven't watched the other shows where we talk about Eternals and stuff, Eternals is supposed to also give us a lot of history as to 
um, the mutants and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to see if they plug that in and how they do it. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna see a young Thanos. There's a lot to discover and explore in this film because we're gonna go back in time thousands of years. We're gonna see humanoids that are standing up. It, it is going to be a spectacle. Well, I was gonna say to you, this might be a Galactus template, how they do this. Yes. I'm just gonna say, Exa planetary size character, if it looks good, just file it away. Yes, exactly. Egg, listen, a lot of things are gonna be opened up here. I, I mean, I can't wait for this film. The Eternals. I also bet that if this works, there are already contracts in place for multiple Disney Plus series with these characters, that some of these side characters will be spun into their own show, kind of like Falcon and Winter Soldier. You think so? Those hits, I guarantee they make it more of like a world building exercise and we get, you know, there's like Henry, Henry anchors a show or- you know, that, That'll be interesting. That's gonna happen. That'll be interesting to see. Let's see what, um, what, they, what, what they come out of this with because this is going to be one of the, the, I mean, there's just so many pluses or positives to this film that you just can't ignore it. And it'll be interesting what people have to say in terms of reviews of this film. Because uh, it's just, it has, has so much going for it. So let's see. Um, I was going to say something about um, the Eternals real quick. lost it i lost it but i can't wait to see the eternal movies i'm sure brian you're it's gonna it's probably your number one film that you're looking forward to shanti is gonna he didn't do a ranking of the films but i think this would probably now be number one i think it just the anticipation just yes. the anticipation right yes also also in that clip we saw finally yeah fantastic four Titles and the confirmation, yeah, there it was with the logo, which means it's a centerpiece. Like it's the, it's the, we're building to that. And it'll be interesting to see that in within the next few months, I would say over the summer, we don't get any announcements that we do get some announcements as to who's um, writing. I don't know if that's been revealed. Oh, actually, um, this guy. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, some cast members. Finally, hopefully, we get Mr. Fantastic. Um, what's the guy's name that everybody's been wanting to to be cast as as Mr. Fantastic? Richard Re Re Richards. Oh, John Krasinski. Oh, John Krasinski. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And apparently, I heard some rumors that Emily Blunt just doesn't want to do this. Doesn't want him to do it. That she, that she doesn't want to do this. Oh, that she that doesn't be, this she doesn't want to be involved. because oh, they want the two of them together because they're married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because she looks like the she looks like she can play. This. She looks right for that role. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, man. Question for you. Uh huh. Do you think? they would prefer to make a casting announcement versus trying to pull the Julia Louis-Dreyfus playbook again and hide one of these characters somewhere in these films and just have them pop up as a, as a surprise camp. I think it would be more exciting if we got that. Like let's say John Skorzewski, we know from him from a cameo Right, we don't know. It's yeah, like a Comic Con, we bring them out on stage. Exactly. And we're just watching a film, and there's a credit scene, and we're like, well, "What? What?" That that would be beautiful. That would be beautiful. Period. But I think if that were to happen, and I'm only guessing here, that if that were to happen, it would happen in Ant Man: Quantum Mania. I agree. Uh, so we'll see. What do you uh, think of the titles, by the way? the titles are clues in onto themselves. So the Marvels? Yeah. 
So we got Captain Marvel. We got Miss Marvel. With her logo at the end. Yes. Uh, Photon. We'll probably get that. Blue Marvel. Oh, interesting. I don't know. (laughs) That would be, I would go crazy. I would go crazy in the theaters if I saw that, if I saw Blue Marvel. But again, they're going to give you a little bit at a time and I'm fine with it. Uh, But to have Blue Marvel and and, and hopefully get to see Blue Marvel hitting his own film. And if you read that storyline, it's great storyline. And I think it it works and um, it'll do well. I'm hoping to see some of that. Uh, But yeah. There's a lot to look forward to, man. There's a lot to look forward to. I'm still a little bit concerned about Spider-Man, but go ahead. I was gonna say, I thought the, I also thought the choice of Wakanda Forever was a nice nod. Yes, 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 yes. That line has become taken on more meaning than I think when they originally wrote right. it, and I thought that was a pretty nice choice. We knew obviously Quantumania and uh, Love and Thunder, but I thought that was that was interesting. So, and then yeah, yeah. the Fantastic Four logo. So, yeah. So that, it did make me think, though, the way they positioned that, that, like I said, th- there is no, you know, there is no infinity gauntlet right in, in, in the MCU. There's no one object we're building towards. So that, that kind of clued me into, like, it is the Fantastic Four that we are building toward. So it's got me on the lookout, like I said, for these, like, so I don't think necessarily, you know, we, we didn't get the aerospace engineer, didn't turn out to be Reed Richards, but I do think that idea of, like, us getting these teases of you know the fantastic four universe the astronaut program whatever it is i think that we that fans weren't wrong i think that's what they are going to do you know and so i'm just fascinated to see how they filter this in but yeah no it's pretty it was a pretty nice uh thing to start the week on like, oh definitely yeah yeah definitely definitely marvel man you can't hate on marvel man and if you do then i don't i i i, I don't i don't know what to tell you but um there's a lot to look forward to. We got Loki in a couple. You, so we had a discussion about Black Widow to pay the 30 bucks or go to the theater. Did watching this thing today push you toward going to the theater? You know what? What makes me want to go to the theater is to experience the audience. And the, the, I guess the love that people have for these characters and for the show that, uh, that Marvel is, right? That, that escapism and that cheering for certain characters and what they do. I think it'll, I'd pay the 30, I'll probably pay the $30, you know, after I see it in the movie theaters. I, I, I think I might go to the movie theaters to see it just to experience that, man, because you saw the touch that they did um, for Endgame and showing the theater theater cool. reaction. How cool is that? That that's what it's all about, man. That's what it's that's right there is what it all about. That's what those ten years um, led up to. Why? Because you cared about all those characters and what had occurred. That's the way you do it, man. That's the way you do it. I mean, we can get into a whole nother subject matter about, you know, what WB has done and why they haven't done it, whatever. But in my opinion, this has worked. And the reaction that the fans give you at the at, at the movie theaters is proof that it does. Anyway, let us know what you thought of that Marvel trailer that uh that 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 introduction into phase four um you know what do you think about the eternals after you've seen those little glimpses the eternals looks amazing open night i'm I'm not this and that i don't care what's going on in the world yeah if i gotta put on whatever i gotta put on to produce (laughs) I, I'm gonna have to do it, but I gotta see this in the theater on the big screen. And if it's on IMAX, I'm gonna have to see it in IMAX. So, if Brian, you're in town. Let me know. Yeah, that might be the one. That might be the one. To, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We gotta, we gotta, and we'll probably do a show right after. Like, you know, who knows? We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's our show for today. And uh, please, if, if we thank all of you who have liked the show and have watched it, who has watched the show, please hit that like and subscribe button, that notification button, and share with your friends. It really, 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 really does help support the channel. And uh, Brian, any last words? No, I will say it felt weird to like not have a Marvel show this week to watch. Like we've been going strong for a couple of months. So I was like, I kind of liked the break, but then I was like, yeah, I kind of missed not having the <laughs> show to watch too. But Invincible kind of more than made up for it. So. Yeah, but now we don't got Invincible now. I know. So we got a little bit of a break. So, so I don't even know what anything that's coming up. Anything that's coming up before Loki. Well, I mean, it's a little bit derivative, but the the new Star Wars animated show is hitting. Oh, Bad Batch, right? We Bad Batch. So if you're, that's like that's like a whole different, um, you know, kind of line. But that's at least. Is that this week? I think it's this week. Okay. I'm gonna definitely check it out. Check it out. Yeah. Okay, so thank you once again for joining us on another Jam Report, and we'll see you next week. Have a good day, good night, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.